So thanks, Jody, for being here. And I um, just wanted to mention that Jody is um, a, a wonderful artist uh, here in Minneapolis. She's mixed media artist, fine artist. She does abstract art, original fine art, sculptural art, contemporary landscape, wall sculptures that are fantastic. Um, you can visit her website, uh, which I did include in the email, and I'll uh, uh, send that out again or put it in the chat. Uh, she teaches encaustic workshops as a core artist for RNF um, and also out of her own studio and is also a golden uh, acrylics teaching art educator. Um, and we've had the great pleasure of having Jody teach for us at Web Paint. So um, thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over now to Jody. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I started painting with encaustic paint about 12 years ago, and it just has completely changed my life as an artist um, because you, there's so many possibilities for it. You can carve into it. You can add layers really quickly, texture, translucent, translucency, um, opaque, opacity. So um, I am working with it flat and dimensionally, and so it's just been really um, a total game changer for me as an artist. So I want to, I kind of joke in my workshops in my Minneapolis studio that this is going to be the first day of the beginning of your encaustic painting day so and then um, i started with rnf handmade paints to me it's like the best uh, paint out there and um let's get started so um i just want to remind you to go ahead and ask questions i kind of think it's easier to to ask them when you think of them and then there will be some question and answer time after the presentation as well so we're gonna switch this Okay, so let's begin with basic introduction. So I want to just tell you that um, encaustic paint is made as medium and it's beeswax with Damar resin. I'm going to hold this up right here. This is um, already mixed together with the beeswax. And what this does is it elevates the melting temperature. So the beeswax by itself is about 140 degrees. But by adding the Damar resin, it's a tree sap. It elevates the melting to be 200, 160 to 220. And then that way it's just more durable. So this is the encaustic medium by itself. And then over here, I've got a heated palette, which I'm just gonna kind of scoop this over here. And I've got tins with paint um, already melted here. And the paints uh, come like this. This is the cadmium green. And this has pigment in it with the beeswax and the Damar resin already mixed together. So it's almost, I call it, I like to call it as a tube of paint. And so you can melt it in different tins like this, or you can rub this right onto the painting surface, the palette, which is um, melted at 200 degrees right now. And um, just paint like this, like you would from a regular palette, whether it's acrylic or other mediums. So just kind of just show you the two different ways. And then I will mix encaustic medium with the paint and that's what I have here in my palette and it, it makes the paint more translucent but it also extends your paint so it kind of makes your paint go further and if you want to work very translucency translucently then you want to add more of the encaustic medium to your pigment so um, I just want to go over the history as well and the history is that I'm going to kind of switch views here I guess I'm kind of spontaneously going back and forth but um, the history of it, I think is really fascinating because it is a ancient medium and it's just recently gotten some momentum. And in fact, um, some artists like Jasper Johns in the sixties brought it back. But in, in ancient Roman times, the, um, the Romans would use it to seal their ships. So there would be joints on their wooden ships and they would seal it with that. And then when they invaded the Egyptians, I like to say invaded, but you know, came, over, came into their country the Egyptians were the ones that elevated it to a painting medium, and they started using it for mummy portraits. So a lot of portraiture, and completely different what we have right now, we have heated griddles that moderate the temperature for us, but in ancient times, I can't even imagine if they had fire and coals or how they really moderated that temperature. But anyway, so they were the ones that made this into an art medium, and then it almost died out until the 60s and 50s and 60s. And RNF Handmade Paints is part of that history because Richard Frumis started making the paint and now it's available to us commercially. And I feel like that's really allowed us to be able to work with it so readily. So I, I feel like as a core artist, I am part of that history and I love um, that 
we have that available to us. So, um, and again, Wet Paint is a great art supply store in St. Paul. So thank you for having me. This is fun to, to reach so many artists across the country and even sometimes the world. We've had um, artists even from Ireland join us. So one, one silver lining with all of this uh, pandemic going on. So, okay, any questions about the history at all? I'll kind of switch back to my demonstrating view. So let's talk about uh, equipment. So to begin, you would need a heated pallet um, just to be able to moderate the temperature. And I have a kind of a paint filled um, temperature gauge here that I would actually lay right on the surface to make sure that it, the paint stays within about 200 degrees. It does have a flash point um, closer to 300. So you just wanna make sure that you keep it within a safe range. And the, um, the encaustic medium, you need to have ventilation with this because the resin that's in the paint, when you heat it, it becomes a fume. And that fume over time as artists, we should be very careful with ourselves and make sure you have ventilation. So at the beginning, when I set up my studio, I just had a window open and then the door. So to make sure I had cross ventilation, but I also now have um, a little more sophisticated uh, ventilation systems with Venta fume and they have changed, they have created a system, which I'm actually going to swing my camera over or maybe not. I'll uh, maybe we'll post that in the, in the comments about ventafume.com. And they have systems that work really great with encaustic painting just to kind of give yourself that way of making sure you're working healthy in the studio. So, so far, heated palette, encaustic medium, some paints, all things to get. Um, RNF Handmade Paints has a beautiful collection of very unique colors. And um, some of them are very opaque and some are translucent. So they have this color guide here. And this is listed on your resources page uh, as part of the Zoom link that you receive. So you can kind of check that out. And the website also has a lot of great resources as far as techniques and safety and all sorts of things. So I want to direct you to that. So the last, um, a couple more things is the brushes. So when you're working with brushes, you want to use natural bristles. And that is because the heat can really take a toll on polyester brush, brushes. And this is a RNF handmade paint uh, hake brush. So it's a Japanese style brush. And the difference with this one is it is bound with tension versus a barrel that is um, glued and then pressed onto it. So these style brushes last a little bit longer, again, because of the heat. And then I'm also um, using a silver brush, which is one word brushes and they're beautiful too. And this is a unique uh, angle handle one that I have. And they have several different kinds of lines, which you can also get these brushes through wet paint as well. And the last thing and most important thing are, is <laughs> your substrate. So ampersand encaustic um, board is a board that was formulated kind of a collaboration between RNF handmade paints and ampersand. And ampersand makes all sorts of different panels for different medium, whether you're working with acrylic or watercolor. But the encaustic board is formulated just for encaustic, obviously. And what you need to have a, as a surface for painting with encaustic painting is absorbency. So you need to be able to have the paint grip to onto the surface. And this is already covered with something called encaustic gesso. And this gesso is, whoops, flip that around. The encaustic gesso is also formulated to be compatible with encaustic paint. So if you're working with acrylic or oil type gesso, that will not work for us because it's a plastic. And you can imagine um, plastic is not very absorbent. <laughs> so you will always wanna make sure that you're working with a surface that is absorbent. And um, oftentimes they'll even <laughs> work on just uh, straight wood because this works as well. Or um, I will add the encaustic gesso onto if I'm working on a wood panel. So you can kind of combine that. In fact, the, the gesso is amazing because if you want to work dimensionally, I'll even paint this on any surface that's not absorbent. And all of a sudden now I can paint the encaustic paint onto it. So this is a nice, a nice addition to your toolkit as well. Um, the last ampersand panel I want to talk to you about, which is what I started out with, 
um, is clayboard and clayboard is really a beautiful acid free surface too and this is absorbent as well so you can also work um, with clayboard um, or the encaustic board from the ampersand series okay so a little refresher paint heated palette natural bristle brushes i always like to say that's kind of hard to say <laughs> natural bristle brushes and uh, abs absorbent And, um, I do wear an apron just to protect my clothing. Oops, make sure, did you guys hear that? I know I our internet. So you wanna wear, I usually wear an apron when I'm protecting my clothing just because wax loves to stick on your clothes. And um, I also will wear gloves sometimes just because the temperature gets really hot and wearing gloves just protects your skin. You wanna at least start out that way. So um, the last thing I wanna talk to you about is um, fusing. So when you're working with encaustic paint, the way that the paint binds to itself is through heat. And so your word of the day is gonna be fusing, which is F-U-S-I-N-G. And so every time you add a layer of paint to a painting, I'm just gonna grab a little sample here. So um, you're going to basically heat, and I'm gonna demonstrate this too, but I just wanted to give you an overview. So you're going to heat using a heat gun like this, and you're gonna have that paint melt to the last layer that you applied. And in that way, when you're finished, ideally you would have a painting that is one layer. So just the thing to remember is every layer, every time you are gonna add some heat so that each layer is bonding to the last layer. So let's begin. So now I'm gonna show you how to go through this process. And um, the encaustic medium from RNF, and let's just open this up. It comes in a solid form, but I like to use it with the pellets. And so you can easily just sprinkle this into a little tin like this. Um, I use loaf pans, RNF handmade paint sells these other little tins like this too. So any shallow metal plate or tin will work well for this to mix paint. And I've got brushes here. And a lot of times when I work with brushes, you can see mine's kind of well loved here is I will start by having a thin and a thick brush. And I'll, I'll just, I actually won't even clean my brushes that often. I'll just kind of dedicate uh, a thin and a thick brush to that color. And um, because every time when I heat up the palette, if there's paint in the brush, it'll just reactivate the paint, which is kind of unique in that you could go to lunch, turn off your palette and turn it back on and you're ready to paint again. So it's kind of a fun, fun versatile that way. And I will show you how to wash your brushes at the end with uh, using a product called uh, Soy Wax product. So, um, okay, let's begin. Is there any questions about any of that? Okay, I think we're okay. So this is a clayboard panel, five by seven, and it has two layers of encaustic medium on it. And I'm gonna begin by doing that and showing you how that works. So this is the clay board, and I'm just gonna dip my brush into this. This is encaustic medium already melted for me. Move that away so you can see. And you wanna begin your painting by adding one layer of this to start. And then ultimately we're gonna do two layers. And this begins our painting. It's a little hard to see there because it's very transcendent, but I can show you kind of at an angle. So you can see I'm already starting to build up some texture, but I am gonna fuse this so that that layer is into the, um, the surface. Oh, I'm getting some feedback here that maybe I can elevate this so you can see that a little better. So this is an RNF heat gun and it has uh, a low and a high setting. And the low setting is really nice if you want to keep um, texture so you can still fuse it, but still keep your texture. But if you want a very smooth surface, you can do the high setting and that will really um, add a lot of heat and flatten, flatten your paint. So I'm gonna do that now and it's gonna sound like a hair dryer, so I just will not talk during that time, but I'll just let you see what this is, except it's not plugged in. <laughs> um, just plug it in over there. Sorry, we're having little technical difficulties. I'll go um, into my next thing about fusing. So you can also use um, these 
creme brulee torches or food torches to fuse. And um, for larger work, I'll even use a big propane tank. So there's lots of different heat sources you can use. Um, irons, if you have an iron at home, you no longer need or use. That's like perfect to dedicate to this. So, okay, we're back in business. So I'm heating this up, I'm hoping. So I'm heating this up evenly so that the entire surface is getting heated up. And when it turns shiny, that means it is melted and then you can move on to another area. So melted is the key and then you can keep um, fusing over the whole surface. Like that. I'm going to show you that and I'm also going to show the torch because um, a lot of artists may already have this and this is a great way to fuse your paint as well. So this has a, um, a, a control at the back that controls the oxygen and then it has an igniter underneath and you're, you would just turn on the oxygen and then ignite that or not the oxygen I'm sorry the butane. <laughs> sorry that was butane I'm talking about not oxygen and you want to have just a tiny bit of a flame. It's like you can barely hear it. And that's the perfect um, flame for fusing. And this goes a lot faster because it is a flame. And then be careful where you set that end because that is super hot right now. So make sure I just even will set it straight up and not have it fall over on my surface. So while I'm letting this cool, it'll take about maybe five to 10 seconds to cool. Um, I don't want to pick up my painting because it could pool the paint. So I just really want to start with a nice flat surface. So I'm going to let that uh, cool for a second. And we have a question, are the surfaces of the paint and medium gloss or matte? So that is a great question. The paint, the encaustic paint by itself has a sort of a matteness and a glossiness to it. And you can buff the painting after you're finished when it's cooled off to make it more glossy, but it's 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 sort of the same kind of waxy surface. So I don't, there's, it's not really defined as matte or glossy. You can add more Damar resin to make it glossy, but it's it will also um, make the paint more brittle. So these are kind of advanced things. Okay, so my paint is, my encaustic medium is now cool and I can, I'll let you just see what that looks like and get a good close up here. A little bit hard, but ideally, I'm, I'm wanting to start for my own preference with a smooth surface. Oops, got too close to my heated palette there. Um, oops, come back here. There we go. So I'm going to add one more layer of encaustic medium, and this will also ensure that I have nice, even layer if there's a spot that I've missed on the first application. So then I'm going to fuse that again. I'm using the heat gun this time. Okay, so I'll let that cool off and then kind of like a cooking show. So I've got this ready to go. And now I can begin painting right onto my surface. So I'm going to do that and off camera, I've got some paint colors I'm working with. So I'm working with today um, cadmium green. Actually, my favorite green is mixing cadmium green pale and cadmium green together. It's kind of a nice medium green. Um, I'm using a Mars red, which is almost like a deep tom tomato red. And cadmium yellow medium and turquoise blue. Turquoise blue is pretty much my favorite blue ever. I love it. So um, I'm just going to start off camera. I'm just dipping right into my paint. And this paint has more medium in it. You can see that it's pretty translucent. It's not opaque, showing, um, showing some of the encaustic medium through it. And you just brush this on. But as you're working, you can see that it starts to cool off and the paint will just sort of drag across the surface. So you'll need to get more paint to cover that area more thinly. 
and I'm just gonna fuse this right here. So again, before I add another color, I'm gonna fuse this so that this color layer adds to the, the previous one. And do you have any suggestions to help with tiny bubbles as you fuse? Good idea. The tiny bubbles are what happens from the wax. Um, what I find is that I just keep heating the area until the tiny bubbles disappear or um, adding more of the uh, paint. So because that medium or the surface has some texture to it, there will be some of that that happens, but I just will keep heating it up and fusing it or adding more of the paint so there's better coverage. So I'm just gonna fuse this for demonstrating. And I'd like to have my brushes sitting on my palette so they're nice and heated up so I don't have to let them heat up. So I'm gonna go now into my turquoise paint and I'm just gonna start to paint over that green. And I just wanted to show you how to do this because you can start to see that some texture is starting to build up already. And that's really what got me with encaustic painting because I love texture. There's so many ways. <laughs> so I'm just really playing. And a lot of times when I'm working on a painting, I don't always know where I'm going with it. But I, I think of it as like stepping stones. And each time you do something, you react to it and keep working with it. And eventually your painting is finished. So I'm gonna just use this one more time and then I'm gonna show you some techniques. And I just wanna really give you that impression of fusing because that really helps a lot. Um, you know, just to, to get it in your mind that you need to do that every time. So here is the surface. I think you can see how beautiful that's starting to happen. And I've got four layers on this painting now. And if I wanted this to be completely flat, I would work the heat gun on the highest setting, the, heat, the high setting. But I'm also working this on the low setting to keep that texture. Okay. So now I'm going to go into collage. So this is a little collage painting I have started, a house painting. And I basically just painted blue on the sky and green down here, just using the same colors I showed you earlier. And I liked this uh, music sheet. Oops. Not off camera. Collage, you want to have a paper that's very thin and porous and not plastic coated. It will work best with the beeswax. And the way to, sh to work with this, so I've got kind of a hair going here. And I'm just going to take my brush out. I'll just show that a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to use encaustic medium as my glue. And I'm going to begin by just dipping this right into the encaustic medium and placing this on my painting right where I want it. Like that. And I'm going to do all my pieces. And I'm dipping it and leaving a spot for your fingers so you don't burn your fingers. <laughs> just going to put that down. And then I've got these little squares cut out and I'm gonna make some windows on this painting here. And I feel like what's key with doing collage is making it feel like it belongs. So I'm gonna integrate that with the paint. And where I left off my fingers, I'm just gonna kind of brush this down and get underneath that area that I just collage. So I've got a nice layer of encaustic medium underneath and on top. And then we're gonna lightly fuse this. And I'm gonna take a heated palette and I'm just gonna start to press this down and this will fuse it. I'll say that up. This will fuse the paint while it also will adhere it. And I'm using this palette knife because I'm working with collage material and I want this to stay flat. So 
So I'm just gonna smooth this out. If you have an iron, um, this works great for a collage to be able to press it down while you're also fusing it. And then I can just start painting on this. If I want to integrate, maybe kind of painting over my roof area, <laughs> just kind of playing right now. But just, you can see that after you fuse it, you can just start painting on it just like the regular classic paint. And then I'm going to fuse that again. And then I have the opportunity, I can start scraping into this, which I think I'll just, we'll kind of just segue to scraping. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Okay, so we've got one question. Okay, so somebody is kind of requesting like more of a close up, I think, so let's do that. Is that right? Thank you for that reminder, because I do um, I do forget to make sure you can see it very well. Um, I do want to mention, I guess, go back to the collage paper. So I like to use these kinds of thin printmaking papers. Um, papers like this work really well that are, I love it that they have two sides. And once you add the wax, it'll sort of blend and bleed through. So just to give you some other examples. So let's talk about um, tools that you can use. So this is my also well-loved Catalyst tool and Catalyst is spelled C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T. And uh, wet paint sells these as well, but they are great for um, incising into beeswax and giving it some texture. So I'll kind of show you, you can kind of carve into the wax this way and you can leave it just like this or you can add pigment stick into those areas, which I'm going to demonstrate as well. And if you want to smooth areas, I have a variety of metal palettes that I like to use for this kind of technique, as well as these um, smaller palette knives as well. So any palette knives that are metal are going to work for you, just anything that can take heat. So keeping that in mind. And let's go, I always have like a plan and now I'm getting out of my plan. So let's go to um, pigment sticks. So pigment sticks are another additional um, supply that RNF Handmade Paints makes. And these are basically um, beeswax with pigment in them and some linseed oil. And these are great for when you wanna do very thin applications of paint. And I will work with these with gloves because it is basically oil paint with beeswax. And this is what they look like when they come at the store. So they'll have this kind of a protective shipping container on there. And you just pop off the end and then take out your, <laughs> mine's really well loved again, but you just pop this out basically. And then you get this, just like this. So I'm gonna put some of this paint in, into the lines that I just carved. And you do this by kind of putting some paint on your finger and the glove, or you can even apply it directly. And this is a way to pull up texture that you have on your painting. And it's a very, also a very subtle color. So we're gonna put this on to um, get it into the recessed areas or the incised lines. And then we're gonna use a paper towel to wipe it. And I'll just start kind of wiping that just to show you that it's really pulling up that texture that I just created using those lines. And artists work with this differently. Some artists will just put this on as a paint color and then you can, um, like I could even just start putting this on my collage piece and using this as a coloration as well. And, and it's very transparent. Versus if you're painting with the beeswax, just as an example, this is more of a brush stroke, a solid brush stroke, and the pigment stick allows you to just have soft, soft, subtle color. 
And so you will wipe off that excess. So that, um, because the oil paint, if you just leave a lot of it on there, it will resist the wax. So we're just using it as a texture. All right, so I'll put that a little closer. And then I do fuse my pigment stick because I have the wax envelop it. So I'm gonna put this on the low setting because the oil paint has a very uh, low melting temperature. I'm just gonna fuse this on the low setting. So my little house painting is coming along nicely. I've got just a few layers of the encaustic paint underneath. I've got some collage elements and now I've done this um, incising texture. To go okay, and the catalyst tools come in different shapes and different combs, basically. So it's kind of fun to check out what they uh, have available for that. All right. Okay, so did I answer that question? Yes. So, well, it's good. Did I answer that? I think I did, but I'll make sure to just say it now that I've talked about that. So the pigment stick has beeswax in it that is that is thinned with linseed oil and pigment. And then the blocks of paint have just beeswax with um, that's without the linseed oil. And so that's why it's in a solid form versus a, a more liquidy form. And maybe Darren can speak to that too if I'm not saying it quite right. <laughs> so nice that we have Darren on camera on today as well. Okay, so the next technique I'm going to show you is, oops, is stenciling. And I love stenciling because it really allows you to um, have a shape that you can repeat on your painting. And I'm doing a little maneuvering here to get all my supplies in front of you. Here we are. So I like to work on a cutting mat. And this is the stencil that I created to um, make this, whoops, to make these uh, shapes that I have on this painting here. So I just have a base of the cadmium yellow underneath this stencil. And this allows you as you're playing with your painting to just look at it and kind of compose it basically before you decide to um, where you wanna put it down. And for this technique, you'll wanna have a very smooth surface. So this painting right here has two layers of encaustic medium, um, a little bit of oil stick underneath here, and then the cadmium, cadmium yellow. So I like to make my own stencils, and this is like one of my postcards from one of my art shows, which I always have a lot left over. So you can um, just take an X-Acto blade and freeform some shapes. Um, I tend to like to do seeds or leaves, so I, I work with that shape a lot. And this allows you to just play and have almost like a found object in your artwork that you can just kind of add to it in any, any way. And these are really easy to clean up as well as economical. And the cardstock has a thickness to it, which makes it perfect for having stencils that have uh, a little bit of let me see if I can show you some texture to them here. So um, this is an example of another stencil that another artist made. This is Linda Ray, and she had made the stencil using these zigzag lines. And you can also use natural materials, like these are leaves that I just basically laid on my painting and just brushed over to create a stencil shape as well. So some other ideas with that. So let's start with um, my yellow panel right here. And I'm just gonna just lay this right over the top. And I'm gonna heat up the surface just a little bit so that it's warm. My painting's been sitting for a little while, so I'm gonna just heat that up. And I find that the cardstock, by finger pressing it, will just stay better. And by not having texture, the, um, the shapes of your stencil will show up better because they won't sort of escape underneath the color. So let's 
do green. So I'm using some of that cadmium green and cadmium green kale that I mixed earlier. And you just will brush this right through the opening that you created. And you can also use tape, like blue masking tape. I'll show you how to do that. That works wonderfully for a stencil. You need something that has more of a linear edge to it. Okay, so now I'm going to fuse this, but I'm gonna fuse it on the light setting because I don't wanna overheat it and make my paint spill. One thing to note is I fuse this with the stencil still on my painting because I want to keep the integrity of the lines. If I would have lifted this up and then fused it, my paint would for sure move. So um, because I do want some nice crisp lines, I'm going to have this be um, more, um, you know, fusing it with the, with the stencil on. So this is a good example of right here, even though my painting looks smooth, the, um, the paint sort of escapes on the side, but this creates like an awesome learning opportunity. And I can just segue into my next technique, which is scraping. So um, scraping involves using a palette, a knife, or um, I actually have one right here. Or I also like to use uh, razor blades that are, have gotten dull. I will use this as a way to just sort of scrape that surface gently and clean it up. And since that wax was just newly fused, I'm able just to wipe it basically off using the paper. And this little nubbins that you get, you can kind of put that back onto your, onto your palette. It's perfectly good paint. So I'm gonna also use this palette knife and I will lightly heat the palette knife up so it moves easily. And I uh, instruct when you are working with uh, stencils and scraping, I'll instruct that you pull toward yourself because that way you won't go down and dig into your painting and you have more control. So I'm just cleaning up this edge because I just want it to be a little bit cleaner. So it's so funny because I had this super nice smooth painting and all this paint escaped. So now you can see how to fix it. <laughs> What about pre-made stencils? Are you able to fuse without ruining the stencil? If they are plastic, they will melt. So, um, so you can use those stencils. It would be like a one-time use. <laughs> and that plastic will melt because it's just like, if you, especially if you use those pink or white stencils that you find at like say craft stores, those um, you can definitely use them, but I just use them once. And that's why I started going to this um, idea of just making my own because it's paper and it's not going to be too hot for the paper. And then I have control that I can make my own, but you definitely can use commercially made stencils as well. Um, in fact, I'll do a little shout out to my friend, Leslie Giuliani. We um, maybe we'll add that into the comments, but she makes her own stencils that are heat resistant. And so there are some out there. So that is me just kind of scraping and cleaning up those edges. But say um, I decided now that I did this stencil, I no longer want one of these shapes on here. You can easily remove it. And uh, scraping using the palette knife is the best eraser, so to speak, for painting with encaustic. So I'm just gonna heat up the tool. So I heated up the tool and the shape that I want to remove. And again, I'm going to just start to press this toward myself and it's going to begin to remove that, that leaf shape. So it works pretty well. So almost gone. So I'll just kind of do some to work here and it also helps if you have some of the paint left that you had painted on you can just kind of go back over that area and actually make it completely disappear and then you're going to fuse that again of course Ta -da! so that is how you can um, change your surface or scrape away something that you're not wanting to have 
And you can also use it as a painting method. So I'm gonna show you a sample of scraping as a technique. So this is a painting that had several different layers of color on it, starting with lime green at the bottom, kind of a purpley blue, silver, and then a violet. And you can use larger palette knives to actually scrape through all these layers and just see, um, see what kind of it's revealed. So it's more of an abstract technique. So I'm gonna show you um, that as well. So I've got ahead of time my painting right here. So it has white as the last layer, but here is what's underneath as a treasure trove. So I started with yellow. I added turquoise, red, green, and then the white over the entire surface. And I'm gonna use this heated palette just to scrape all the way through the layers to just get um, a scraped painting basically. So I'm heating up the palette knife so it moves easily across the wax. And then I'm also going to heat up my painting somewhat because it's, I painted this yesterday and it's gotten cold. So I want to make sure it's warmed up when I can do the scraping technique. Thank you, Virginia, for listing Leslie's um, stencils on there, you are on it. Okay, so I'm gonna just what gets revealed. I'm getting down to that green. I might keep this up just a little bit more. And you can see on my palette knife, now I'm starting to remove that white. And you can just kind of peel this off and just add it back to your palette and use it for more paints if you want. Or you can wipe it off with a paper towel or scrape it off. Let me do that because I have a lot here. And let's go back and start scraping that one more time. And I am using somewhat of force to just get through this layer. I always joke that if there's an area in your painting you don't know what to do with it, just scrape it. That's kind of, <laughs> at least it's worth a try. But it is um, spontaneous and you don't always know what you're gonna get. So it's kind of coming along nicely. So I'm getting down to the blue, which is the second to last layer. So there is some yellow also starting to come through. And I can stop at any time once I'm happy with the results. But I just, I do love this because it gives kind of a spontaneous uh, surface. And then you can, um, just because that wax is so pliable to be able to scrape through it, it's fun to be able to do that. And now I have this mystery color on here. You can also save this or make a nice tan from your green and red and white. <laughs> okay, well, I think that um, kind of is what I was gonna show you today, but I do wanna um, also mention you can use some of these uh, pottery tools. These are nice for carving into the beeswax. If you wanna create some lines or um, a dull pencil works great too. And when your painting's warmed up, it's really easy to carve into. So these potter's tools work great. You can do larger areas, scraping. So there I'm really getting some nice, nice shapes. There. Okay, so let's change the view and let's just see, I think, um, go back to our camera view and am I melted it's so hot in my studio today <laughs> okay so um, just to kind of overview so we talked about stencils collage scraping and pigment sticks just as a few little choices that you can use with encaustic painting there's really honestly so many more that um, I would just be demonstrating for at least another half hour but I wanted to kind of wrap up and just ask if there's any other questions or any thoughts um, about how any of these techniques could apply to your work or if you're new to encaustic painting. Any
any things um, come to mind? Just to give a few minutes. So I'm so happy to be able to um, teach at Wet Paint, and I look forward to the time when I can do it again in person. So there was a time. Oh, Darren's asking about the tiny bubbles. Oh yeah, so I'll go back to that. So how I fix my tiny bubbles is by using uh, the heat gun, and I just will keep going over the area until it's molten to make sure that um, that area is smooth. But if you find that they still happen, then I will add more paint because I find the coverage, the problem could be coverage that there's not enough paint to fully cover the whole area. Um, and the last resort is if you have a scraper tool just to kind of smooth over those areas and fuse so that you can just make sure that that part gets covered while you're um, fusing and scraping. Ah, oh, Dietland's here. Hi, Dietland. <laughs> okay, well, um, I think that might conclude uh, today's session. So um, I'm hoping to um, do some workshops online in the fall, um, if not in my studio. And I do have some pre-recorded uh, encaustic painting videos already, demonstrations on my website, if you're interested in checking that out. And then I'm at your disposal. So if you have any questions after you watch the videos, you can check in with me and I'll be here to help you. So with that, maybe I'll turn it back to Virginia. Is there anything else you want to do, say, in closing, Virginia? Uh, thank you so much, Jody. Um, I did see Dietlin mentioned that RNF has a YouTube channel, so you can also take advantage of that. And we'll be um, adding this recording to our YouTube channel at wetpaintart.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the day and good weekend, and um, happy painting. <laughs>